Welcome back to the training ground for another episode of the Yo Show. Something's telling me it's going to be a good one as well. So let's get started. Well, it was a pretty good Easter weekend for us Orient fans. We're not quite there yet. You can smell it, but we're not quite there. So we have got a banging episode of the O Show in store for you today. We're going to be catching up with the principal investor and vice chairman, Ken T, and Orient's number one, Dean Brill. But first, let's go and have a chat with the Orient striker who recently joined the 100 Club. Here we go. All right, Maka. Um, so 100 appearances for you recently. How much does that mean to you? Well, it's good to such a young age. It was not Sam Young, but to reach such a, like a landmark 100, 100 games for a single club in or two, only two seasons, so I'm happy with that. And that, I guess it's a, a testament to how regularly that you've been playing. That you know you you spent a number of years at Colchester and didn't didn't reach that landmark. And you know within only two years of being at Orient, um, you've hit that landmark and had such a successful spell as well. Yeah, it's just all about giving a chance to play. And credit to everyone here since I've come, both managers at the start and now like after here. He's, all believed in me to go and play the games I have in consecutive uh, two seasons. Yeah, I'm just, it's something I was what I aimed to as a the players, you want to reach the, your landmarks and I'm happy to get that one. And do you remember the initial conversations that you had when, when you know, making that move to Orient? You know, how was the club sold to you? Well, I didn't really need to sell it to me. I've played against Orient for a number of years now. I know what the club's about, seeing where they got to, where they could have been, and it was kind of like a, when I first joined, like a project to see if we can get back to where I want to be, and it, now it's it's taken two seasons in a short time to, get to well, not jinx anything yet, but hopefully get out of this league and get back into football league where the club belongs. And yeah, it didn't really need any much selling to me. I wasn't happy at the time at Colchester, and I think I needed a fresh start, and it's probably the best thing I've done in my career so far. And um, it's. 49 goals since, you almost hit that 50 mark, I guess that would be the aim for the remaining two games of the season to, to hit that down mark as well. Yeah, that's the aim, 50 goals in two seasons is certainly for striker once to fair, consecutive two to 25 a season, what I'm aiming for and I guess I've got two games to go and do it, big one Saturday which could be the most important one and I'm just looking forward to it. And how are the boys looking uh, and feeling ahead of Saturday's game? Oh, there's a real buzz about the place, even when we left the game Saturday um, on uh, Monday. It was a real big buzz about the place and it has just feeding through now and like, it's just, you want the game to come now so the week's dragging and we just want it to come and it's, uh, it's, it's a real buzz about the place. I'm sure the gaffer is keeping everyone's uh, eyes on the prize though, there'll, there'll be no getting carried away before before we actually win anything. Oh of course not, no, everyone's staying focused knowing that what we can achieve just going, if we go win the game on Saturday and it's just not about getting, like I said, not getting carried away too early, it's just about doing, being fresh and doing the right things and if you do it right the prize has come to you. And just looking back at your Orient career as a whole, um, is there any goals, you know, specific games that stand out to you? I uh, liked my one against Eastleigh recently. Uh, because I hadn't scored in a while before then, I think that meant a lot to me. And I think I just enjoy scoring goals. There's no one I really pinpoint on. I just, as a number nine, it's his job, job to go and score goals. Like if I was, if it, if I was a centre midfielder or a defender, you'd ask me to pick my favourite goal, I probably could have. But as a striker, I just I thrive on scoring goals. and. I think any goal for me is a favourite one because it means, it means a lot to me getting a tally up and helping the team win. Right, now it's time to turn attack into the fence. We're going to go from the top of the pitch to the back. Let's go and have a chat with audience number one, Dean Brill. Here we go. So we're joined now by the shot stopper, Brillo. Dean, thank you very much for joining us. No worries. How's, uh, how's the week been after? Well, it was a good weekend for yourself yeah. personally as well. Two clean sheets. Yeah, two clean sheets. Uh, obviously two positive results against two tough teams. Um, which has set up a great season finale on Saturday. And a couple of pretty impressive saves there, one from the free kick against Harrogate and that goal, goal mouth scramble at uh, yeah. Solly Holmores. You've, you've been busy, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, not too bad. Um, there's always going to be moments that mm. um, everybody's going to be called upon and the less for me, the better. Um, but yeah, it was, it was like I said, it was a, a good performance and a, a good clean sheet. Well, that's why the reason why we are here today, Dave, we've got a... Uh, your season highlights, your personal season highlights. We're going to look through your saves of the season, the ones that are up for yeah. nominations as well. Um, and we'll just discuss them and okay. see your no thoughts on them. Nicely done by Weston, and that's a brilliant stop from Dean Wells. 
you big out ship stone in it. It's a better angle. That was, that was settling right into the bottom corner, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It's not the most spectacular one, um, yeah. obviously, to the, to the naked eye, but us as goalkeepers work on that quite mm. a lot. And obviously, strikers will be hit it low and hard. Yeah. Um, it was a good strike. Like, he's a, he's a left, as well. You've got yeah, he's a left footer as well, which which was um, obviously in the report, and we do a lot of work on that. Mm. So it was uh, he did well to turn and hit it, and yeah, it was a, it was a good save. Yeah. Nice Enjoyed that one. That's, that's somewhat similar to the first one almost, isn't it? That's you yeah. kind of with diving the same way. Yeah, a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Um, they're a bit harder. Much, to, much closer as, as yeah, well. Yeah, they're harder to replicate in training. Yeah. Um, obviously with, with the players around and, and, and the crossing scenario. Yeah, that, that, it looked more of an instinct. Yeah, it? it's, it's harder to replicate, but like I say, it's, um, it, was a good, it, was a, it was a nice height. Uh, it looks maybe a little bit more spectacular. Did you put it on for the cameras? <laughs> Elliot gets some great. I don't think it's Elliot gets some great views. Yeah. There's half a chance here. There's a chance. There's a shot. Carried away and a second save. Double save that one. Yeah. Well, Not a good angle. That's a strong hand there initially, isn't it? That's almost uh, that go undetected now. Yeah, that it's, strong hand. It's, it's, it's close. Uh, it's close in, which. Which is again, it's a, a, a tough one for a goalkeeper mm. right around your feet. It's uh, obviously being six foot three. It's, it's that's the area that strikers aim for. Um, but again, we work on that. They, they can be replicated in training mm. a lot. The up downs. If you watch the yeah. goalkeeper session, that's why we go up down as many times as we do. Um, obviously, to make the second save as well. well. I've done a goalkeeper session. I, yeah, uh, it was tough. I remember that all too well. Yeah, that it was, was tough. Well, I think it was easy for you guys. <laughs> well, one of the best games of the season for me. It's right from away. Yeah, different type this one. Mm, it's with the legs, yeah. So that was a... Yeah, was that a, was different again. That was like a one on one. Is, yeah, a one on one, yeah. We, uh, is that something you enjoy as a keeper? Or is it no. did you dread the moment? No, um, I think... It's, it's, it's a, t a tough one because he has a good touch, the boy. Mm. Um, so he sets himself. I actually played with Pikey at um, uh, Colchester, who's on loan. Okay. Um, it was a good touch, big strong boy run through. Um, and I think in them moments, it's about picking the, the right time not to get too excited. And yeah. I stood my ground, and we, we do work on them in training as well. Mm. So. Um, another thing that's so, practice. So all these saves that we're seeing, obviously, that they're, well, that's, they're, that's they're, they're worked on day in day out. Yeah, that, and that's why that's why we got to train and um, we, we work hard and, mm. and obviously we try to replicate as much as we can for a match day in training. It's so onto the bar as well, onto the post. Onto the post, yeah. Let's get the good angle. I like seeing the reaction to the bench. <laughs> Spoiled someone's day. That is, that is a ridiculous save. Yeah, it was. Uh, that is mental. That's an enjoy that was an. It was an enjoyable one. That one. Yeah. Um, you had all the Orient fans behind you. Yeah, we had the fans days. in the corner. Obviously, we we were quite comfortable, and then um, we were going for a period of mm. uh, the finishing the games was, was tough. They were obviously fighting for their lives, and uh, yeah, that, that 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 was that was one of the ones that I think the moments as big as the save. I was going to say because that kind of. Kept us in the game at 2-1, yeah. meant we won the game. And it was also kind of, it was the game after having a Waterlooville, we, we were just starting yeah. another run. Yeah. Saves like that can be crucial for the season. Yeah, I, I think, again, as you get older and wiser as a goalkeeper, which, which tends to happen, you you realise that moments are just as important as mm. the actual save. Sometimes they're maybe not as spectacular or it might not even be a save, it might be a cross or a through ball or something. It's, it's the moments that are important. and. And again, that's what we train for. We train for them moments, yeah. and, and and luckily, I've made a made a good. That's my favourite, to be fair. Was it? Yeah, yeah that's my favourite. I think it's everyone's. That's even better than the Repton one, isn't it? Well, he's more central, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's well on there. Yeah. Not the best first touch. Um, it wasn't a bad first touch. I think I remember thinking at the time he was offside. Yeah. But he, he timed his run well. But yeah, he timed, he timed his run well, and and that's where you've got to be 100 percent focused. That's and right. Yeah, we, isn't yeah it? we've got to be ready to. Go, I've got to be ready to go, and and hopefully try and the last line of defence, as they yeah. call it. Um, so out of the six, there, I think this might be an easy question yeah. for you. I think you, I don't know the answer really. Yeah. What would be your personal favourite? Yeah, I, th I think like we said, the order shot one, and, and for me, it's for the moment as opposed to the save. Was, yeah. I obviously enjoy the save, being a goalkeeper and. I watch other goalkeepers make saves, and, and we enjoy making saves. But I think the moment was. Would, would that save have been completely different had you been five 0 up? Would, is the fact that that had kept you boys in it? Is that, did that um, make it more special? I think from a technical point of view, it would have been similar. You'd have been, mm. I'd have been yeah. really, really pleased with myself, and um, we'd have discussed it as goalkeepers and, and what have you. But yeah, I, I think the fact that it was two one, and like I say, then big moments. You do look back through your career and think that was a big moment. Mm. Um, and we've had, we've had a few of them this year, hence why we are where we are as a team. Um, but yeah, that was my favourite one. Nice. And I think it's one clean sheet away from yeah. from, from a record Yeah. Uh, on Saturday against Braintree. That, yeah. that must be, is that in your mind? Um, it's a nice thing to have in your mm. mind. Uh, we set, I think it was the average to win this league is 16. We set at the start of the season um, and we reached that pretty quick. and. 20 would be a nice round number, mm. um, and obviously to, to, to put it with a record would be good as well, but the result's more than personal well, records and well stuff. Well, I, so. I hope you do manage to get that record, and thank you very much for joining me today, Brill. But uh, now we're going to head over to Kent Teague, everyone's favourite Texan. Let's go. Right, of course he needs no other introduction. Uh, Kent, thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. Over here, other side of the pond for you in England. Sure. It's been a good Easter weekend for you, Has I guess. Been. Fantastic, yeah. The, we played really well, did what we needed to do, and uh, now we're in the position we want to be in. And you have been at the training ground today. Sure. Um, watching the boys train? Yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy uh, just getting to be around them and, and seeing kind of what they do and how they do it. And, and I'm guessing that, as, as has been the case for the whole of the season, despite us being kind of pretty close, mm. I'm guessing there's, there's still throughout the club a focus and, and no complacency. Right. The job's not done yet. Not so until the job is done, there won't be any complacency. I'm sure that Justin will have them very focused on Saturday. They all know what the objective is. Everyone's clear on what we need to accomplish. And I do think they believe that they can accomplish it. But we need to do it. We mm. need to execute and make it happen. That's what we got to do. And we're coming to the end of your second season now. Ben. Yes. Uh, Amazing. Did, did you even expect it to, to, to be... No. No, I, in, I, didn't, I, didn't, I did not think that we would be in this position. Um, I, you know, we came in with what we called uh, a, a, like a four-year plan, and we are obviously ahead of schedule. Uh, excited about that, glad that we've put ourselves in this mm -hmm. position, but this is not what I expected. I had a conversation with Justin at the beginning of the uh, season, and I told him what I what my expectations were, and he let me know that he didn't think my expectations were high enough. And so uh, it looks like he's going to be right and I'm going to be wrong, which is fantastic. Can we in a slice of humble pie? <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. I'm more than happy to do that. And uh, are you one game to go, one league game to go, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, and a cup final at Wembley? Sure. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great day out. Uh, my family's going to be there, uh, you know, sort of in mass. Yeah. And we're all coming in that Friday and going to hang out and, and just get the chance to be with some of the supporters. You know, my mom loves the supporters club and, and loves a lot of the people in there. So we're going to have a fantastic weekend. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm looking forward to asking Justin, not quite yet, but I'm looking forward to asking Justin if, uh, you know, if the double is probable or possible. So okay. we'll see. We'll see what he says. Okay. It's certainly a very, yeah. very it's possible time. It is. It's possible. It is. But yeah. let's, let's look past the, the 19th of May. Okay. Um, the, the off season. 19th of May, yeah. Are you, are you looking forward to having a breather? Or are you, or are you just waiting for... I, I, do not, I do not enjoy the off season. Um, it's not something I really enjoy because I, I love the thrill 
of uh, you know being a part of Orient, watching mm -hmm. Orient, having a reason to come to London, all of that. So when I think about off season, um, it's a little bit. It's I I end up being very disconnected being in the United States. Um, but I know that it's a really valuable time. It will also be a time when we think about what the club is going to be the next few years. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll be thinking about that when, you know, when it's in the off season. And then, you know, hopefully uh, we will be back at it very quickly. It will seem like, I think, to the players and to the coaches and to the staff that we're back at it very quickly because we press into the middle of May which is a little bit longer than most people go. Yeah. So uh, we'll have a lot to do uh, between now and the beginning of next season. And, but I think we'll be very, very well represented, and, and I think it'll be. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Well, I'm hoping for a positive one yeah. on Saturday, Ken. I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing you there. It's all about Saturday it's right all now. About That's all Saturday I'm thinking about. Yep. I'm, I'm, I yep. feel a little bit sick. Yep. I, I feel a little bit I, sick. I, I have thought about and tried to figure out how best. To think about what I want and so I really focus on what I want I know what I want I know what I want for Leighton Orient mm. at 2 30 on Saturday and that's what I'm focused on so I'm not necessarily nervous or anxious about it I'm very positive about it I can see it happening in my mind and I can't wait to see it really happen to see how it turns out. That's oh. going to be the best part. I know, I know. it makes you all yeah, nervous when I talk about nervous. it. I know it makes you all nervous when I talk about it this way, but I am really looking forward to Saturday. Well, hopefully it is a good one. Thank you very much for joining me, <laughs> No Ken. problem. No and problem. I'll see you there at 2.30. Yeah. Looking forward to it, absolutely. No doubt. Right, that's all we've got time for, and I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Massive thank you to Macaulay, Bond, Dean Brill, and Ken Teague for joining me. Now it's all eyes on Saturday, and everything crossed is going to be a good one. See you there. Come on, you Orient! <laughs>